Hey, TG. It's been a while since I've been here. First time under this name. But I wrote a thing, and wanted to share it with you. The night was more than halfway over. Not that anyone could really tell. The pall of smoke that rose from a continent's worth of war had darkened the sky months ago, and showed no signs of breaking anytime soon. Only the chrono on the platoon sergeant's wrist told them the time, and a 0200 came and went and the daily bombardment from the unit's basilisks finally petered out, a ringing silence crept across the battlefield. The sky was still lit by the sullen glow of artillery, but it was a thousand miles distant. The commissar walked the lines. By some unspoken but long-standing tradition, fires sparked a life across the field, on both sides. A private side and burrow deeper into his coat as he leaned against the crumbling wall of the trench. Somewhere across no man's land, he figured, some heretic was probably doing the same, searching for a few minutes comfort in the firelight, a moment's respite from the endless grinding of battle. He scrubbed the sleeve across his face, leaving a stripe of mud across his forehead. His helmet lay beside him, his lasgun leaned in careful balance across it. The commissar, he knew, had been in the field as long as they had. She'd started out full of regulations and fire, terrifying the men and hounding any lack of discipline mercilessly. A few months in, she'd started to not soften, mellow, perhaps. The non-commissioned officers of the Imperial Guard had rubbed off on her, and then some. The commissar had become something of a mother to all of them. A stern, a yielding leader in the kiln of battle, but a mother nonetheless. Kind enough to overlook one one private's moment of laxity as he drifted off to sleep in a trench. Gentle enough that when she placed his last gun back into his arms and touched him fondly on the shoulder, he merely stirred quietly, mumbling the name of a home left far behind. The commissar made her rounds that night. Stopping by each meager fire, pale faces looking up at her as she brought what comfort she could to her weary charges. The longest she stopped was at a far-flung observation post, when a young white shield, conscripted to fill the hole left by a cheerful, big man with a loud laugh, burst into silent tears midway through the watch. The commissar held the small woman close, rocking her as she cried for her friends and her world. Eventually, the white shield subsided into sleep, and the commissar carried her carefully back to the fireside, whispering for a more seasoned trooper to take her place. Two guardsmen carefully bore the conscript away to her bunk, and the commissar walked on. Signs had sprung up in the trenches over the long months. Names of places where something of note, of memory, had happened. Some jovial, some heroic, some quietly sad, almost none in the same hand. One, nearly unreadable, worn away by the hands of thousands of guardsmen touching its name as they passed. The commissar paused by that sign, and the shattered landscape it pointed to. She ran her hand over the lettering, and a few tears left tracks down her dusty cheeks. A moment later, the commissar walked on. A few hours passed in near silence. The commissar made her quiet rounds, lifting spirits and dispensing a few words of encouragement. At one fire, she stopped for a few minutes, listening to a corporal from Druk forcing a plaintive, heartfelt hymn for deliverance. She joined her voice to the soldiers, and within a few moments, it spread to the rest of the circle. Smiles gradually returned, thin, uncertain things, but then nonetheless. As the song slowly died and a new one began, the commissar faded back from the firelight, and continued her walk. The infirmary was her last stop of the night. A ragged hole in the earth, made by a shell hit and carved by the hands of guardsmen into as good a field hospital as they could manage. Walls of corrugated metal held back the crumbling dirt, and a floor of baked brick gave the medics acceptable footing. The patchwork of tarps overhead crackled lightly in the breeze as the commissar ducked into the hospital, and she continued her work. Bed to bed, hand on shoulder, she spoke quietly to each stricken soldier. She spoke not of honor, or duty, but of their friends, and news from the front. Guardsmen, she found cared far more about their brothers in arms than they did about the far off Imperio. Eventually, a medic touched her shoulder, and led her toward a darkened corner of the hospital. A pale figure, wrapped in bandages and far smaller than it should have been, lay coughing fitfully. The commissar pulled up a stool, and took the man's hand in hers. She stayed there, for a time, leaving occasionally to bring him water, or a morsel of food, 
Eventually, as his eyes grew sightless and his memory began to fail, he cried out weakly for his mother. She gently shushed him, and gathered him in her arms. There she stayed, gently stroking his hair, until the emperor claimed his spirit. When the medics came to check on the pair, they found her still holding him, head leaned against the steel wall. They carefully pulled him from her grasp, and laid her gently on the cot, pillowing her head with a bag of clean bandages. Her sword and pistol they hung beside her, ready for another day in the emperor's service. They quietly pulled the curtains closed, and went about their business. In a few hours time, the commissar would awaken. She would draw down the sheets someone pulled over her during the night, lace her boots, and reseat her gun belt. She would reach into her pockets and retrieve a file of paste, made for her by a grizzled old sergeant. She would wash her face in a shallow, stainless steel basin, and carefully smear the paste under her eyes, to hide the bags of insomnia. She would straighten her cap and stride forth, projecting strength and purpose and the inevitable victory of the Imperium. In a few hours time, the war would begin anew, and she would answer her duty. For now, the Commissar slept, and the Emperor took up her watch. And, that's it for now. I may kind of continue this, or write other things in this vein, in the future. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, though, and I'll open this thread to anyone else who wants to write stuff. So I want to know what you guys made of this one now. Um, it's so fucking different from any 40k story I've ever done before. I don't even think I've read anything related to 40k as sickly sweet as this. You know, and I don't really know, is it sickly sweet because it's 40k? Or is it sickly sweet because it's fucking sickly sweet? You know, which doesn't exactly mean it's bad. It just means it's, to me, it's very difficult. It's almost, it's almost Xenos, <laughs> Xenos in a sense. Almost, it's so unusual, so weird. Either way, I do like the guy's lighting style, even if it is a bit over the top. So I look, I do hope he lights a lot more. And maybe we might see him in the near future. Um, but no, definitely let me know what you thought of this one. Because it, it's, it is different. You know what I mean? And I don't really... I don't even really know what I make of it myself, if I'll be honest with you. Um, but no, I got this one sent in, by the way. Um, so I thought, yeah, fuck, it might as well. And it is so difficult, so I was like, yeah, fuck, come on, let's do this. But, like, I don't want to keep you for any much longer. Hope you boys enjoyed. Let us know down below, and I'll see you in the next video.